All right. Well, my name's Austin Adams. Uh, I serve on staff here as one of the pastors. Our senior pastor is finishing up vacay uh, down floor. He's driving back right now. And so I thought we should give him some love this morning. Are you guys with me? You guys want to give him some love? Okay, so, uh, yeah, hold on one sec. So I brought my phone up here, and uh, I feel like we should uh, send him a little bit of a Snapchat video, okay? A little video telling him how much we love him, all right? So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to start the video out, and then I'm going to turn around and go like this, and you're going to say, we love you, Pastor Scott. All right, you guys good with that? Let's test it out. Ready? Here we go. We love you, Pastor Scott. Okay, that's okay. You can do louder. All right, here we go. Just, just get in your system. We love you, Pastor Scott. Here we go. Ready? We love you, Pastor Scott. All right, very good. All right, set up the video. Here we go. Switch it around. All right. Hey, Pastor Scott, uh, Austin here. It's 1139. I'm standing normally where you are with some of your favorite people, and they have a message for you. You guys ready? Here you go. We love you, Pastor Scott. All right, yeah. Okay, well, we're looking forward to having you back next week. We'll see you then. Boom, we did it. Nice. Under 30 seconds. All right, I'll send that off to him later. Uh, funny story, he was watching the 9 o'clock, and we did this, and uh, my iPad and my phone are connected, and he started to FaceTime me. <laughs> and so it goes to, like, this screen, and so I answered it, and so we FaceTimed Scott on uh, the iPad there. But then I said, I need my notes back, so I had to, you know, shut him down. <laughs> All right, we're in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. This morning, we're in a series called The Ten Commandments. Ten uh, choices that will change your life. And so uh, look with me on the fifth commandment. This commandment was the one where you dragged your teenage kids here this morning to hear this one, okay? So uh, teenagers, where are you at? Oh, none of them are here, okay? They're just uh, silent right now. Well, we're glad you're here. Uh, commandment number five, the fifth commandment, Exodus 20, is where we will begin here this morning. Uh, before we jump in the text, though, uh, some of you, most of you know, I think, uh, that I have a two-and-a-half-year-old. His name is Wyatt, John David, and he is, uh, yeah, okay, someone babysat him later. Uh, and uh, he's a fun kid for sure, but the thing he loves, we found out, more than anything, is he loves to watch TV. All right, who here has kids that love the TV? All right, yeah. And so what we found out is uh, the TV can be used as an incentive to get stuff done that he needs to get done. So it's like, Wyatt, take a bath, and then you can watch one of your shows. Uh, he's into Super Wings and Chuggington right now. Uh, and so, uh, or like, pick up your toys, and then you will get to watch some TV. When he was younger, he struggled with his W's, and he'd say, Ach TV, Ach TV. And uh, we'd know that he wanted to watch TV, right? And so there's something about kids and there's something about us well, as parents that use incentive to help our kids get stuff done, to do the things that they ought to do. Interesting enough, God places an incentive in the fifth command. It's the only one that has a promise attached to it. All right, so he says, honor your father and mother so that it will go well with you and you'll live long in the land. And so there's an attachment of an incentive for us as children of someone to honor our parents. And so the thing I want you to get today is that uh, when we love family, we enjoy life. When we love family, we enjoy life. Uh, God has instituted it such that the family is the first thing we are exposed to. A mom and a dad that give us a name and we grew up in their household and, and we learn what authority means. Uh, that God has instituted authority in our lives and it helps us when we become an adult and we look with government and school system and, and a boss someday. We understand that authority because God has placed us in a family. So as we love and as we appropriately honor our parents we realize that we will enjoy life. That's the promise he gives us as believers. So what I want you to get is the Ten Commandments. We're in the fifth one. The first four were vertical relationship. Our relationship to God, okay? 
uh, God is now going to pivot, and he's going to switch and go more horizontal for the rest of the Ten Commandments. And so he starts out with the very first thing we experience, and that is the family, right? And so uh, chapter uh, uh, 20, um, verse 12 is where we'll start. Uh, I want to raise three questions, though. Three questions you may have. As we look through this text, and I'll raise them and then I'll answer them as we go. The first question is, how ought we to honor parents in different seasons? How are we to honor parents in different seasons? It's going to look a whole lot different from a young child to being an adult child. The way that we honor our parents is going to look a little different, right? A teenager to an adult child, it's going to be look a little different. So we'll unpack that as we go. The second question is, and this one I think attaches itself a lot of of hurt. Uh, And the second question is, how do we honor dishonorable fathers and mothers? Some of us, the reality is, don't come from a great home life. We might have had a dad or a mom that has stepped out on us as a family, and and there's there's deep pain there still. And so, Austin, how, how is it that I need to honor a parent that's maybe acted dishonorably? The third and final question that I want us to get to is a uh, flip of the coin is kind of how do we help our kids make it maybe easier is the right word uh, to honor us as parents. And so the third question is how can fathers and mothers parent honorably? All right. So those are the three questions we'll jump into. Let me read verse 12 of Exodus 20. It says this, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land. That the Lord your God is giving you. So pretty straightforward. Uh, The question we have is, well, what does honor mean? And the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 6 picks up this command and he unpacks it a little bit for us. Helps us understand what the application of this fifth command. And here it is right here. uh, uh, Ephesians 6. Children, obey. Uh, So there we go. There's there's, uh, one way that we can honor our parents is by obeying them. Doing what they say. And so, uh, obey your parents in the Lord. uh, For this is right. It's the right thing to do. Uh, There's a lot of things we have uncertainty about in life. Uh, We're not sure of, should we do this or that? This for sure is the right thing to do. There's no question to honor, to obey our parents is the right thing. So he picks up in quotations, the fifth commandment. Honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. That it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. And so the word here, honor, that we see in the text is the original in Hebrew, it's, it's weighty. It's the idea of heavy. Uh, the way we talk, the way I interact with my parents, it, it shouldn't be done in a lighthearted way. It shouldn't be done in a flippant way. It, it's a weighty thing to do to honor someone. Um, the opposite of honor really is rebellion. It's the, the part of our heart where it says, I ain't going to do that. And watch me not do it. That's the exact opposite of the honor. And, and yet rebellion is really, I would say, fueled in our culture. It's, it's encouraged in our culture. And then he goes in to say, uh, moms and dads. Interesting, in this day and age, it would have been easy for God to say, honor your father full stop. Uh, It was a very patriarchal society. It was uh, the fathers meant to be honored. There wasn't a lot of honor for women. And and here he says, and mother. As if to say on the organizational chart, there's mom and dad, and you need to respect and respond to both in an honorable way. And as if to say, this is the, the ideal family situation, is to have a mom and a dad, and you honor them both. Interesting, it's, it's not an or, it's an and. It's not honor my father or my mother. It's honor father and mother. Uh, we've all been there, right? Uh, a mom and a dad, we know we can get more out of mom if we go ask her than if we ask dad. Or maybe dad is a lot more fun than mom. And, and so we honor them and we speak well of them because we connect better with them. Maybe our personalities are more aligned with one parent over the other. And, and it's not that you dishonor the one you don't get along with or don't often agree with. You honor them both. And then we have the promise. 
you will, you will have success. You have greatness in the land. And so the people of Israel at the time this was written, they were in the uh, desert, right? Uh, not a lot of food. Uh, wandering around in the heat. And uh, God says this land that's flowing with Okay, you're listening. Some of you are. Uh, and so you're looking forward to this land flowing with milk and honey. It's coming up. And that's the idea of abundance. You're going to enjoy this new land, this inheritance, this promise that I've given you. And so for us in today, we're not in the desert wandering around. But uh, there's still the same promise that we will have uh, life and life to the fullest if we obey and honor our parents. So that's what I mean by love family, enjoy life. We'll enjoy life as we honor uh, mom and dad. Uh, Colossians 3.20 is a fantastic verse uh, that picks up on this exact theme. And it says this, uh, children, obey, again the application for honor, your parents in everything. Uh, Not the things you want or like or dislike. No, it's everything. Here it is. Why? Why would I do that for this pleases the Lord? This pleases God. It it puts a smile on his face when I obey my parents. Oftentimes, we're uncertain to you about, well, what's God's will for my life? And although there's uh, different levels of hard to figure out, do I go to this job or not? Or do I move here or do I stay here? God's will for your life is to obey your parents. And some of you are looking at me like, okay, this message is for the kids that already left the building, right? Right? It's like, no, 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 hold on. You're someone's child still, all right? If they're still living, you're an adult child. And so you as well obey and honor your family, your mom and dad, because this pleases God. This is his will for your life. So let's enter into those questions I raised earlier. How, how ought we to honor our parents in different seasons? Well, the first season would be young children. It would be my son, two and a half years old, coming up on three, uh, he needs to obey in all things. It just unanimously, you just need to obey what I say. And although we can explain to them, oftentimes they don't understand uh, why they need to, so they just need to simply obey, full stop. Obey in all things. But then we get into the next category, the next season, which is adolescence, uh, 10 to 19 years old, and uh, this would be the older children. So in there, I would say is to respect with the right attitude. And all of the parents in the house said, amen, right? Respect with the right attitude. You should obey. That's that's easy. That that should be done. But some of us as teenagers, we obey, but we don't do it with the right heart attitude. We do it with some anger or some upset feelings. Like, I, my brother, my sister did this. Or they don't do as much as I do. And so why do I need to listen? I love it because uh, Jesus uh, has this same thing happen to him. Oftentimes I hear from uh, teenagers, students, that uh, in adolescence, they're like, my parents don't understand me. Uh, they, they don't get me. They don't know what I'm going through. They're old school. And Jesus, in Luke 2, he was misunderstood by his mom and dad. Uh, they, the, uh, Mary and Joseph left Jesus, right? If you've ever left a kid, okay, don't raise your hand. Uh, but they left the, their son, Jesus, in Jerusalem, took a day's journey, turned around, came back, couldn't find Jesus. Finally, they see him at the temple. And he's talking and he's conversing with all these guys. And he's like, wow, this kid knows a lot for being 12 years old. Jesus was 12, and uh, his mom, his mom says this. Mary gets up to him, and he says this. She says, son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. Translation, get over here right now, okay? And uh, Mary and Joseph are not happy, right? Uh, they're not pleased with what their son did. And this is Jesus, you know, just, you know, oh, the uh, ruler of the world, you know, God's son. And they're upset with him. And he says, don't you know I'd be about my father's business? I'm at the temple. I'm doing what I was sent here to do. 
in verse 50, and they did not understand the sayings he spoke to them. Teenagers, you've ever felt misunderstood? Jesus felt the same way. But verse 51, he went down to them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. He was respectful to them. He could have told them off 5,000 different ways. He's the ruler of the universe, and yet he felt misunderstood, and he still respected his parents. So students, students, it really doesn't matter if you feel misunderstood. Your job is still to respect your parents with the right attitude. Can I say this to parents? Uh, parents, when you're dealing with your students, your students, they don't need another friend. They have plenty of those. What, what they need is a mom and a dad who are firm with them, who pursue after them when their heart is wrong, when it's not right, and you need to work through and they're, they're being dishonoring to you. They don't need a friend there. They need a mature parent that's going to guide them, that's going to help them, that's going to raise them in the discipline of the Lord. And so students, uh, teenagers, respect with the right attitude. Third is the adult children. It would be most of us here. Uh, what does it look like for us as adults now to honor our parents? We're not little kids anymore. We can think for ourselves. What does that look like? And I would say this. It's to love in all circumstances. To love in all circumstances. In this day, uh, in, when this was written, there wasn't Social Security. There wasn't government housing for people that got older. Uh, you were expected to take care of your mom and your dad uh, as, as they did when you were a child. And so uh, as they got older, you were to care for them in this familial relationship. And, and so as we think about our day and age, and I'm not against nursing homes, and I'm not against the, the Social Security. Those are good things, but make sure they don't take the place of us caring for our parents. That we don't disown them or we don't ever talk to them or our lives are just too busy and we're going to this sporting event and, and that event with our kids and we forget about mom and dad. Reach out to them. That's, that's the way you honor them. Making them a priority, not, not just writing them off. First Timothy is pretty bold in what it says. It says this, but if anyone does not provide for his relatives, especially for the members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever wow, like, I need to care for my elderly parents. And I'll leave it up to you and your conscience and the Lord and the Holy Spirit to figure out what that exactly looks like in your context, but making sure you're doing that. I would say this, too. When I first got here at Crossroads, I started a, a small group with young couples. We didn't know anything. We didn't have kids. Uh, we were just still in the honeymoon phase. And in small group, when we divide men and women, uh, what always came up, there was like the common thread I would always hear is, what do we do about in-laws? Uh, it was just like this common thing. It's like, uh, whose house do we go to on Thanksgiving? Is it yours or mine? Or where do we spend Christmas? Yours or mine? And it was this navigating process, and, and it, it takes a while to work through. I get that. But I would just say this. If I could go back and talk to those individuals and in my, myself now, if you will, I would say this. I said, you need to realize that those in-laws are now your parents. They're, they're not her parents. They're now your parents. You married her. You become one. They are now your parents. So you need to respect them, honor them in the same way that you would respect and honor your biological parents. So, adult children, love in all circumstances. Second question that I raise, uh, and again, there's, um, a level of, of hurt here, I get that, and so I want to I move cautiously. Uh, for as many as that are here, there might be some in this state. And the question is, how do we honor a dishonorable fathers and mothers? How do we, how do we go about it when uh, a, a mom or a dad is, has mistreated us, or, or worse, has call, called us to do something that is wrong, that is, is exactly against what Scripture commands. What, what do we do? How, how do we still obey this command but still love God? Let me take you to the Old Testament, just a story. And we, we worked through it um, in uh, the, the spring when we went through the life of David. 
And the story is King Saul. You remember King Saul? He had a son. His name was Jonathan. Jonathan was really close to David. King Saul and David did not like each other. Well, Saul didn't like David. David was growing in popularity with the people, and King Saul didn't like that. And so King Saul did a dishonorable thing. He commanded his men, including his son Jonathan, to kill David. Dishonorable action? I think so. So here you are, you're a son of your dad, and your dad has just told you to kill your friend, your best friend. What do you do? Jonathan doesn't do it, as the story goes in the Old Testament. He, he, he stops, he actually confronts his dad. He says, what has David done to you? In a respectful way. So what I think we can note from this narrative from the Old Testament is this, that oftentimes uh, our earthly parents do something or act upon us in a dishonorable way, but our highest commitment is to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we can't go against what the Word of God says. It has to be directly against here in the text what God has said. And so it's, it's hard, it's difficult, but our commitment to the Lord is greater than that of our parents in those situations. Matthew, Jesus says this, he says, whoever loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Like, your supreme allegiance and loyalty is the Lord Jesus Christ, above human relationships, even that of your parents if they're asking you to do something inappropriate or against what God would say. So what do I do, though? It's heavy, right? Uh, it's heavy to be in that situation. Uh, let me say two things, um, two things for us. The first I would just tell you if I was uh, one-on-one with you, I would say this. I would say extend forgiveness to your parent. Why? Because it helps you. Have you ever met someone who really despises their parents? And they say, I'm never going to be like my mom or my dad. And yet you look at them and you're like, man, you're just like them. And why is that? I would argue that it's because they've nurtured bitterness in their heart. They've been acted on. They, they, they've had a dishonorable parent in the home. And, and so they've, they've just festered and they, they've nurtured that bitterness and that hatred. And they now become the very person that they despise. So extend forgiveness. It's, it's for your benefit. Don't, don't let this circumstance be the center of all your decision making. And you're so reactionary to someone who's treated you wrong, especially, and as hard as that is, a, a parent. The second thing I would say is express thanks. Express thanks and get your heart to a grateful place. Even uh, there might be a lot of dysfunction in the home, but attach yourself to the good things of home. I, on my vacation, I read a, a, a man's book. His, the book's title was Hillbilly Elegy. It was a New York Times bestseller, and the gentleman's name, is, gentleman's name is J.D. Vance, and he came from a really tough, tough home in Ohio, and his mom was a drug addict, and he had multiple fa- uh, father figures roll through the home, and he was really raised by his grandma and grandpa, and he rose above that, and he went to the Marines, and then he finally actually graduated Yale Law School, and it's just his memoir, and at the end of the book, he looks back, uh, and, and at one instance, his mom even tries to kill him. And he looks back and he says, man, my family was dysfunctional for sure. But but here's the thing. I thank the Lord for the mom and dad, the grandma and grandpa, sorry, the grandma and grandpa that raised me, that that took care of me. So the good things that I did have, I attached myself to those things. So express thanks. Um, And I would say this as as I I close this question is is this is also the power of the gospel at play in your life is at the moment where you accept and receive Jesus, he, he transposes you and brings you into a brand new family. He's adopted you into a new family that, that, that there's a heavenly father who won't abandon you, who won't mistreat you. And so the power of, of the gospel is really understanding I'm part of a new family. Yes, my earthly family is dysfunctional. It's, it's a wreck at home. But hey, I, I've got a new family and a new church body and I have a spiritual mentors here at this local church, and 
Psalm, Psalm 27, it's just a great promise if you're one who's in this. Uh, it says this, for my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Mom and dad has forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. He won't refuse me. That's a great promise. Third and final question is this. How can a father's and mother's parent honorably? So the flip side of the coin at the uh, verse 4 of chapter 6 that we read in Ephesians, it says, it says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and in the instruction of the Lord. So the idea is, is don't make it more difficult than it needs to be for them to honor you. So, so what does it look like to parent honorably, to help our kids to respond to us as parents in an appropriate way? Let me list out three. The first, I would say, is a correct view of our kids. Have a correct view of our kids. Psalm 27 is very clear. Your kids are a blessing from the Lord. They're not a mistake. They're not an accident there in your home. You're not wishing for someone else. No, they are yours, and you view them. The correct view of your kids is, they are a blessing to me. I recognize that. My father, he texted me last weekend, and he, he said, man, I'm really proud of you. And he texted me and my uh, brother at the same time in a text thread. And he said, this is the first Sunday where I'm preaching at my church, Austin's preaching at his church, and my brother was preaching at his church in Dallas. And all three of us were doing, and, and in that moment, my dad was expressing just how he was a blessed man to have his kids walking with Jesus and doing the work of the Lord. And so do you, do you view your kids as a blessing? Yes, it may be difficult at times in the adolescent years, but do you view them as not a mistake, not as a, a difficult, but man, I have the chance to raise them in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Second is this, fulfill your duty. Fulfill your duty. Your kids are your responsibility. Yes, there's great programs. There's great teachers. There's a great assistance out there. But you're the primary worker in the home. You have the most time with your kids to raise them to love Jesus and to respond well to you. It's not the role of the teacher or the youth pastor. It's, it's your duty. It's your responsibility. So take it up. This is an endeavor that God has given you. So do that with great hope and confidence for the future. Third and final, I would say this, is, is leave, leave a legacy. Leave a legacy. You've got little eyes watching you. They're following you. They want to be like you. So mom and dad, when you disagree at home, maybe around the dinner table, are you teaching your kids to honor your spouse or to dishonor your spouse? Do you speak well of them in front of your kids? Yes, you can disagree with them, but are you doing that in an honorable way, that your kids see that and they will have a legacy of your kids doing that as well? In closing, I, I want to I do something with us here. Some of you are here with your family, and so I want you to kind of grab them close. You don't have to get out of your chair, just kind of pull them close. Some of you might be here by yourself, and so just open up your hands for where God would have you. And, and, and what I want to do is I just want to pray over you as a home, as a family, as you raise your kids, as you would respond well as an adult child to your parent. Um, and just I just want to pray over you. I pray a blessing over you here this morning. Can we do that? You guys good with that? I see some hugs, okay? Yes, family, that's good. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for the family. God, you instituted it way back in creation. And so like right now here, Lord, we have families gathered together, holding and squeezing one another tight. Lord, thank you for this family you have put together. God, it is not by accident that the kids are sitting next to these parents. Lord, you've, you've seen that. You're sovereign. You know. So Lord, I pray for the kids that they would respond appropriately to their parents. They would obey them, honor them with the right attitude. Lord, for those that may be holding on to a mom or dad that is uh, aging, Lord, I just pray that they would care well for their, for their mom, for their dad, pursue after them as they once had them pursue after them. So, Lord, thank you so much for this, these families in this room. I just pray a blessing that the evil one would not infiltrate these homes, that they would stand strong against the acts and the works and the effects of the evil one. Lord, fill these families with your Holy Spirit, I pray. 
in Jesus' name.